Let's talk boss battles. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to Steampunk Power Ups, the show where we make awesome educational resources and experiences. Today we're talking about boss battles. Now, historically, the way I've done boss battles is as a review activity. I ask students questions and they answer those questions and it takes health away from a boss or if they get it wrong it takes away health from them. Now uh, I've done this in the past with Pear Deck or Nearpod, um, these active learning type softwares to get the input from the students. Uh, this year though uh, things are a little different. This year we have COVID-19 going on and so uh, those methods, those techniques aren't quite as smooth uh, since my classroom is fully digital right now. So what I've decided to do is to promote uh, the boss battle from the review activity to the assessment activity. And the way I've decided to do that is with Google Forms and Google Sheets. And you set up a Google Google Form as, as your test or your quiz. Of course, it's boss battle, not just a test. Um, and then students fill that out and then those points get taken away from the boss or the student's health bars respectively automatically on the Google Sheet. So let's go ahead and take a look and see uh, what that looks like. So this is a, uh, a sheet that I sent out today on Twitter. Um, I sent it and a form out and I just asked if anyone would fill it out. That would be great. Let's see if we can beat Garblot. That's uh, the boss that my students have been fighting the last couple days. So I figured I'd use it for him too. It's got this lovely little gif of Garblot the troll that I have made here. And, uh, and then his health bar and his maximum health and his current health and the student's health bar and their maximum health and their current health. Um, the way this works is there's uh, a form that's sent out to students, whether, um, you know, you can do that with, uh, with your LMS or, you know, what have you, um, but the students fill out the Google form, right? Uh, this one that I set up today is just a little five question form. Um, you know, you ask for your student information or stuff for, for today's, I kept it pretty simple, just the email address and the name, and I'll go over why I wanted the email address later. Um, and then uh, put a little music in there. You know, I always tell my students it's not a boss battle unless there's some music. And then this one was just about Lord of the Rings, just to keep it fun, just a little five question quiz. And then uh, once students have filled out the quiz or once we want, you're ready to set this up and connect it to the boss, you actually probably wanna do this before they, before they fill out the quiz. You can go over here to responses and you can hit the generate form. Uh, I'm sorry, generate sheet button there. Um, and that will generate you a nice Google spreadsheet here. Um, and like I said, I've got one response here. And then this is what pulls what the sheet here for Garblot uh, that I made pulls the data from. So if this is the nice pretty front page here, but all really all the works are right here behind it in the formulas tab. Um, and so the way this works is I've connected this sheet to the, uh, the, the Google form generated spreadsheet uh, using an import range function. So the import range, what it does is it pulls data from another spreadsheet. And what you do is you write, you put your link in as your first term and then the page and then the cells that you want for your second term. Now, rather than just pasting that link in there, just because I was going to be using this multiple times and I wanted it to be easier. Instead, what I did is I referenced cell J2 here and, uh, and then I just paste the link in there. Um, and what that link is, is that's the link from, uh, from the other sheet. So if I delete that out, all that stuff goes away, except for these numbers here, which are the health, which we'll talk about in a minute. All right, but what you do is you just click this link here and you just uh, copy and paste that on over. Now, typically the first time you do this, uh, it's going to ask for permission Right, um, so I'll go ahead and link that one here. There we go. Um, typically, it will put a little error here and it'll ask for permission. Um, I already hit that the, that they could link together, um, so it's not going to ask for that. But typically, that's what would happen. 
and then it pulls all that information over and I just have it set to pull the student scores over so students could technically since I set this as view uh, as them able to view the sheet I mean really you could hide the formulas tab too if you're worried about them seeing it and then they wouldn't know it's there um, but technically the way I had it set they could come over here and look and see what the scores were but they don't know who's is who's and so it doesn't really matter um, so then once it pulls that data in from the form generated by the uh, or from the sheet generated by the Google form um, oh and by the way uh, this is the name of the sheet that it's pulling from so just make sure that those match right it usually names it form responses one and so that's what I've got it set as here um, and then for C2C so this is the, the column with all of the the um, um, uh, scores um, is, is what it's pulling over there but if it doesn't work that's probably where your issue is probably the names not the same so that would be a good thing to check so then what I've got here is I've got this sum of column A and B column B here is just in case you have any items or modifiers you want to add in to attack the boss and I'll talk about that in a minute um, and then uh, and the way I did that is I did a sum with these two columns and then I'm multiplying it by negative one it gets rid of this little fractiony look there and then it's ready to add to the starting health um, so negative four plus 35 right will give us our 31 there that's his current health based on the one person who has attacked him so far so that's summing C2 and D2 right there's what that command is um, the way that I set up these numbers you kind of have to think through a little bit like so for me um, I want my students to get a 70% average to beat the boss um, some people's threshold might be higher or lower whatever it is that's fine um, but the way that I calculated like I said I've been doing like 10 question quizzes this one was a five questioner but I've been doing 10 question quizzes and so the way that I would calculate that is I would say okay for this class period I have 20 students or I have 30 students and I'd multiply it by the average score that I would want right 70% so I'll multiply that number of students by 7 uh, in in my 10 question quizzes or uh, or by you know if it's a 20 question quiz I'd multiply it by 14 for this quiz it was only a five question quiz um, and so a 70% average for a five question quiz is 3.5 and I figured if I had 10 people answer this, that would be amazing. Uh, it's amazing just having one person answer it. So thank you for answering that. Um, and so 3.5, that's my 70% average times the number of students. 10 gives me the 35. And that's how I ended up there. The Knight's health, the student's health, is a similar thing. Um, the student's health I do by doing the lowest possible amount that I want them to get. And if they get below that, then you kind of, the boss beat you, right? You, you, you perished. Um, and, uh, and so for a five question quiz, right? If you get uh, two questions wrong, you have a 60% actually, which is kind of a bummer, right? Um, uh, which means that the most questions we can get wrong on average is two. Um, so two times the number of people gives me my 20, right? For a 10 question quiz, right? It would be four. Um, so I'd multiply that by the number of students, you know, so if it was 10, it, it would be 40, right? If it were, you know, 20, it would be 80, so on and so forth. And that's how I get those numbers there. Um, while I'm talking about those, let me talk about how these health bars are set. So these two numbers here come from these numbers here, right? It's uh, the the 35 and the 31, and you can see that it's got those cell references, right? From the formulas page E2, from the formulas page D2, and then this bar is uh, is set up with this command, right? So it's sparkline for cell. Uh, for the term in A5, right, 31% or 31 health points right now. And then for your chart type, it's a bar graph. And for your color, we picked red. And then um, you can change that to other colors, which I'll show you in a minute here. And then for the max, um, you can put this as a number, but what you can also do is to, uh, to reference a cell too. So I referenced the formulas. I could have actually referenced this one here, um, but I referenced the same one that's referencing from the formula page, um, which is the 35. So we can see right now our max health um, 
you know, so like I could type this value in and I could say, well, like let's for instance say that I change this max health to 31 right now. What we should see happen is that bar go up all the way. Oh, I've made it angry somehow. Let me hit undo. Um, so, oh, it's because I deleted the um, the end there also. So if I put 31 there, right, you can't, you don't forget your set brackets there. Those are important. So if I hit the 31 there, boom, his health went up all the way, right? Um, so you can set that as a set number, but I figured it was just easier that if this number was changed, that that would change automatically too. So I'm going to undo that. Maybe, maybe I'll undo it. There we go. Um, and so then I'll, let me show you real quick. If I decide that um, I need it to be a little harder, uh, everyone needs to get a perfect score. So I need this to be out of 50 now, right? Then this would now be out of 50. This means you'd have 46 left, right? And because this bar is connected to that, that same value that changed automatically. But I'll be kind. We don't. We don't need to. We don't need to have that many people respond to beat him. I might. I might, I might lower it even actually. Um, and the same with the knights, right? That that health bar is set up the same way. And I also did a cell reference for that one too, so that if you went to change that, it would change automatically there too. The way that I work to calculate taking away the knight's health is with a little bit different function. So what I did is I did a count function for the scores column and I counted how many terms were in there. And then I multiplied by that by the number of questions that there were. Now this is where I made an error earlier because for, for my students, for my classes, this number will be 10, right? Because there's 10, it's 10 possible points. Um, uh, and so you multiply that by 10 and then whatever this sum is, right, we'll sub will do a difference there and that will give us how many missed points we have. Um, so earlier this, when I logged on, I was like, oh man, this health bar has dropped a lot considering that just one person's responded. Oh, it's because that was incorrect, right? That needs to be the number of possible points because that difference will give how many have missed, right? Because this is the number that are correct. This is the number possible. So the difference is the number um, that have actually been missed. And uh, because I have the different set where it's it's the max being subtracted from the actual, that means that's gonna be a negative number. So I'll add those together, boom, that gives the knight's current health. Uh, now, the thing I was gonna mention right here, the damage from items and the defense from items. So um, if you have items in your classroom or you wanna allow privileges in some way, you wanna add some sort of modifier, maybe you were just uh, a student did something good, so you're like you get a bonus point on the boss battle, right? What you can do is you can add manually points to the attack or to the health here. Um, and these sums for these totals are for those columns, right? So this one's summing uh, F, G, and H, all three of these. Um, so anything I add in here, right, we'll add to there. And so we can see, boom, that one point we missed because they had an item that increased that health. Uh, we can say, oh, I want to add some additional attack here. So I'm going to add five more attack, right? Boom. So now it takes off nine. And then these bars update automatically, right? Now this health is all the way. And then it shows you what has been played from defense and what has been played from, uh, from additional attack. And that's kind of fun because students then can see the impact that having their items has made or their powers or their abilities or what have you. Um, so, but, but none of the XP lab community has earned items from me. So we'll just go ahead and take those away now. Um, the last thing here, the last thing that I did that was just kind of a fun thing just to spice things up is I used a, uh, an extension called Certifyum. Um, and what Certifyum is, is it lets you, or is it an add-on? I guess it's an add-on. It's an add-on called Certifyum that lets you send a certificate when a Google form is filled out. So I made a, uh, just a sample little certificate. This is a version of the one that I had for my students uh, to, to get sent out to anybody who completes the quiz. I set it at 10% as passing. Um, for my students, I actually set it for 60% is what will allow them to get the certificate. 
and it fills it out for you automatically, fills out the student's name for you automatically, and you can do a custom one. It has a bunch of different templates you can use, but you can do a custom one off of Google Slides too, which is really cool. You design what you want your certificate to be in Google Slides, and it fills it out automatically. So with this command, it puts the person's name in there, puts how many attack points they got, right? And then I've got a little message here. I, I had it put in their house here for my students here, right? So it said, um, instead it said, uh, it's up to, you know, the house of Biri, the house of Duos to, to defeat the boss. Now, again, we can't defeat the boss together. We can survive the boss alone, right? But uh, we have to defeat him together is how I do it, right? Um, and that way, those those victories and losses are one and shouldered together. Everyone is in on the prize and everyone is in on the defeat. Um, I've only had, uh, so far, I've done, done boss battles twice so far this year. I've had one house actually beat the boss so far everyone else has been really close but not quite beat him but they haven't lost all their health so they survived right uh, and i've only had one house that has lost all of their life right and that and uh and and died um so monday i'll talk to them because we just did this yeah uh the other day yesterday um, and i'll tell them that i had a revival spell and i revived them but it's going to cost you know 80 xp for the house, which actually only ends up being like 10 XP per guild. And so it's not a huge detriment and it's one that they can make up and they can recover, but it shows a little bit of difference from just having a draw with the boss. And then I've got additional XP and additional items if they beat the boss. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's uh, my Google form boss. It's 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 a lot uh, more simple than, than maybe some other people's, um, you know, uh, Adam Powley has some amazing uh, boss spreadsheets. He calls them dread sheets that you should really check out. Go to uh, classroomteacherpowerups.com, I think, something like that. I don't know. I should have looked it up before. Um, um, and those are amazing and have kind of a lot more bells and whistles. But what's nice about this is it deducts automatically. Um, this should work in theory with uh, free response questions too. So if you want to put some questions in there that you grade, I did all multiple choice, so it grades it automatically. But if you want to put some free response in there that you grade, uh, in theory, it should still work, right? Because it's going to put your scores on a spreadsheet and uh, and then this will take it from it. So you can maybe have a combination of uh, multiple choice and free response and then maybe grade the free response and they don't know until the next day if they beat the boss or not, add a little suspense. Um, so, uh, if, if you are finding this helpful, if you're finding these resources helpful, I'd love it if you could follow me on Twitter or like comment and subscribe on the video. You can, uh, follow me at Mr. Cedarquist is my Twitter handle. I will be putting the templates, uh, from that I've shown you today in the description. So you can make copies of those if you want. Uh, and just remember to change those key numbers to get the results you want in terms of health and balancing out. Now that all takes a little bit of practice. So that's it for today. Until next time, go out and make something awesome.